welcome back to another video from the Block IoT. In the previous video, which was part one of the Internet of Things or IoT Masterclass series, we explained what's the plan for this masterclass. And as we saw in part one, we unboxed the Raspberry Pi 5, we set the Pi up, we did all the required configuration to have Raspberry Pi 5 up and running, and then we installed the required software such as Grafana for data visualization, InfluxDB for storing the data, Mosquito MPTT broker, and a few other softwares. So at the moment, our test server is up and running, and our services are running in the background as Docker containers, so we can start building our applications. So in this video, which is the part two of the IoT Masterclass, we are going to write a Python code to publish some sample values to two different MQTT topics. We will subscribe to those MQTT topics on the different machine, and then we will store the data into the InfluxDB database, and ultimately we will visualize the stored data in our database on Grafana dashboards. There are other videos on YouTube and different websites which show you how to do this using Node-RED, but personally I prefer Python or any other scripting languages over Node-RED because they are more flexible to implement a real life and production ready applications. So without further ado, let's jump into the details and implement our project. As you can see, I have made a VNC connection to my Raspberry Pi 5 server. So I have access to my Raspberry Pi 5 desktop on my host, which is my laptop. You can just directly connect a mouse and a keyboard and also HDMI cable to your Raspberry Pi in case you have problem connecting over VNC. Okay, so on my Raspberry Pi 5, I have a Python code. I will provide you with the code on Black IoT GitHub page. Okay, just to make sure our services are running without any problem on Raspberry Pi server, let's just open a sample dashboard on the Grafana to make sure that Grafana is up and running. As I explained, to access the Grafana web page, you just enter the IP address of your server, which in our case is Raspberry Pi 5. and then port number 3000. So once you have this page, that means your service is up and running. I have not had any issue with the IoT stack Docker containers and they are pretty stable so far. So let's uh, jump into the code and see what do we have in here and how different parts work and then we run it and we create our dashboard. So we will use two main Python modules in this project. The first one is the Paho MQTT, which is a free library that helps you work with MQTT in Python. The second library is InfluxDB for working with InfluxDB in Python. There are many uh, example codes on the internet for both libraries, but I found one of them useful and I've used that and my code is based on that. So in the first section, we are just going to define where is our DB located or influx DB located, which in our case is on our Raspberry Pi 5. This could be anywhere else. It could be in another machine or even on the cloud and so on. You need to specify the address and also the port. Then on line seven, we just create a new database and here I'm just going to call it block IoT underscore DB. Once we created that database, we just switch to that database to use that database for the rest of the program. In the next section, we are going to define where is our MQTT broker. And in our case, again, it's on our Raspberry Pi 5. And we will specify the ports. And we'll just define two sample topics. Each MQTT client needs to have a client ID. So in this line, a random function is used to generate that uh, client ID. Once the definitions are done, we need to create a function to connect to our MQTT. That's what these lines do. At this point, we have everything and we are ready to subscribe to our MQTT topics. So we need a function to do that. I will call it a subscribe and we just need to pass the MQTT client into this function. Inside the subscription function, we will read the payload, we'll parse the message, and based on some rules that we define, for example, T stands for temperature and H stands for humidity. This is just an additional way to make sure we are not just storing junk data. 
So in these two sections, which look almost the same, we will prepare our data to be stored in our InfluxDB database. This can be done in many ways and it really depends on your application. But here I have created two separate measurements or tables for temperature and humidity. You could combine them both if you would. So we will call the first table lab one, the second table lab two. And then we will assign the device ID for temperature sensor and humidity sensor. And most importantly, we will store the value that we have received through MQTT subscription to those topics. And once our JSON message is ready, you just write the value to your data block using the InfluxDB clients module. And that's it. That was a very simple code, but you can expand this to many different applications as you would. You can build weather stations, monitoring your machine for your home automation and so on. So be creative, the sky is really the limit. Before running our code, we need to make sure we have installed these two modules on our Raspberry Pi 5. To do so, you just open a new terminal. The process of installing Python modules on Raspberry Pi 5 is a little different. Normally, you would use pip or pip3 to install new modules on Raspberry Pi 5 because the Python is already there. And to avoid conflicting different modules together, we should use apt instead of pip. So let's just install the Paho MQTT. Once the Paho MQTT is installed, we need to install the InfluxDB client module. Now we have both modules installed and we can run our code. To run our code on Guinea IDE. By the way, you can use other IDEs such as VS Code or even Qt Creator to write your Python code. I have created another video a few years ago and showed you how to use Qt Creator to write your Python code. So for now we are using Guinea. So let's just execute our code within Guinea. As you can see, the first message is successfully connected to MQTT broker. That means we are connected to our broker and we have subscribed to those temperature and humidity topics and we can use a software such as MQTT Explorer, which I explained in the previous video, to publish some sample values into our topics and see the result on the right side. So let's just write some sample values into our humidity topics. As you can see, the values are coming into my Raspberry Pi 5. So let's just fill out our table with some sample data because we are going to use those for data visualization on Grafana. Okay, I think six records is enough. Let's do the same on the temperature topic. Just make sure the values are coming in your MQTT broker by looking at the terminal on your Raspberry Pi 5. Okay, I think it's good enough. By now our Python code has created those two tables that I showed you and the sample values that we just published to our temperature and humidity topics are stored in our database. To confirm that, we can just open a new terminal on our Raspberry Pi 5. Let's just open an InfluxDB shell. Let's see how many databases we have in our InfluxDB. You can list the available databases by typing these commands. As you can see, our database block IoT underscore DB has been successfully created. And we also have another database which has been created by another service. Now let's see how many measurements we have in this database. If our Python code works well, we should have two measurements inside this database. First, you need to use your database. and show your measurement. As you can see, we have two measurements and quickly let's see what do we have in lab one measurement. As you can see, the values that we publish to our temperature topic are successfully stored in our table or measurements. 
Now we can proceed to the next step, which is using this data in Grafana and build beautiful dashboards. Access the Grafana, you just need to uh, type in the Grafana IP address and the port 3000. And the first time it will ask you a password, which I showed in part one. So now we are logged in in Grafana. Let's just build the dashboard. So first of all, we need to define our data source, where the data are coming to Grafana. To do that, you just go to your home and go to add your data source. We want to add an influx TV data source. There are some readily available data sources for you that you can pick for visualizing your data on Grafana, but for now we are just going to select influx TV. And all you need to do, you just type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Make sure you enter the HTTP at the beginning as well. In the second section, you just need to define your database name and a few other settings. For HTTP method, select get. If your database has a username and password, you need to enter them here. But in this tutorial, we didn't set up any user and password, so we just leave them empty. And once done, click the save and test. If the information is correct, you should get this message that says the data source is working. Now we can go back to our Grafana, click on dashboards, new, new dashboard, add visualization, define which data source you want to connect to. So we connect our influx DB. And as you can see, you have a blank page. So on the bottom side, you can select your measurement, which in our case, there are two. We are going to add visualization for both of them. So let's start with lab one, which contains the temperature data. And under the select, you need to select what you want to visualize. So we want to visualize our values. So there are some settings that you need to do to make sure your data visualization is useful. First of all, let's just give it a name. And you need to scroll down and there is a very important setting to connect null values, select the always because we want to have a connected line. And here we just want to define the time period that you want to show your data. We just want to keep it under 30 minutes or maybe 15 minutes. And that's pretty much it for this graph, which is just a trend or historical data for temperature. You can add more settings, you can change the colors, change the thickness of the line and so on. Once done, hit apply. So as you can see, we have successfully added one visualization for temperature values. Now let's add another one for humidity. You need to select the other measurement, lab two, visualize the values. And as you can see, right now we have some dots. What we don't want that, we want the connected lines. After assigning a title, which is humidity, scroll down and select always for connect null values. As you can see, our data points are now connected with the line. Okay, and hit apply. So now we are just going to add two more objects, which are two gauges to show the real time values for each sensor. So go add visualization, select the gauge, and that's how you can select different type of graphics. We just select the gauge, lab one for temperature, select the values, give it a title, otherwise it might be confusing to recognize them after. You can define different thresholds to visualize with different colors. For example, we wanna show over 60 or 70 as red and above 50 as yellow. Hit apply. So you can just move them like this as well. So let's just move the temperature like this. And now let's just another one for the humidity.
Okay, similar to the temperature. We can give different color codes or threshold for our value. So always make sure you save your dashboard otherwise once you refresh this page everything will be gone. So make sure you save your dashboard, I call it part 2, you can add description, you can make different folders to keep them organized if you have more than one dashboard and hit the save. So from now on, once you log into Grafana, you will have access to this dashboard and it will be always there. So now to test it, let's publish some new values and see the result over here. And open our MQTT Explorer. Let's publish some new values for temperature topic. Okay, as you can see, we published the value temperature 36 and in real time, we can see it on our dashboard. So let's just change it again. Value has changed. And let's just fill out our table again with some new data. As you can see, because our value is over 90, the color has changed to red. Now let's subs and now let's publish some new values to our humidity to make sure that works as well. Yes, as you can see that works as well. Let's just fill out our table again with some random values. As you can see our dashboard works smoothly and the cool thing is you can see the dashboard on your smartphone as well. Let's just quickly see how that looks like. The process of opening your dashboard on your smartphone is similar to opening on a laptop or any other machine. So simply type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi server and port number 3000. You need to log in as I mentioned. And once you're logged in, you can go to your dashboards. And as you can see, you can see your object on your smartphone as well. Okay, that's it for the part two of Internet of Things or IoT Masterclass from the Block IoT. And in the next video, we are going to add a Siemens PLC or system to make our IoT solution more practical. If you like this video, make sure you suggest it to your friends and colleagues and please subscribe and like this video. That will help us to create more video for you. Until the next time, have a great day or night.